Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at what would happen if you put the wrong volatile anesthetic into the wrong container, or putting SIVO into an ISO vaporizer or ISO into a SIVO. And we're going to look at this because it's important to understand the concept of why it happens, and it is going to come up on your board exams. So let's get started. I do want to preface this by saying that modern vaporizers have different adapters for loading them. What this means is that you can't actually load SIVO into an ISO vaporizer because it doesn't fit, but conceptually it's important to understand what would happen one way or the other. So before looking at the topic specifically, we need to define a couple of terms. So first, before even defining vapor pressure, we need to define what pressure is. And I like to use the physics equation, which is pressure is equal to force over area which is equal to mass times acceleration. I should probably write that as a little a. Over area. And this is going to come into handy when we discuss this and also in the next video when we look at the desflurane vaporizer. Next, we need to define vapor pressure, which we will write as VP. And we're going to define this in words. And what vapor pressure is, is the pressure exerted by a vapor on the walls of its container when it's in thermodynamic equilibrium. So the way that I think about this is if we have a container here, and we're going to call this the SIVO container, and it's filled halfway up with SIVO fluorine. And we'll scribble all this in. This is all SIVO. We'll just give a lid to this container for the thought experiment. Some amount of the SIVO fluorine will become vapor in this container. It's going to leave the liquid phase, and it's going to go up into the vapor, and all these molecules are going to bounce around, they're going to bounce against one another, they're going to bounce against the walls, and some number of them will actually end up entering back into the liquid phase. And when the same number of molecules is leaving the liquid phase, that is re-entering the liquid phase from vapor, that's when we have thermodynamic equilibrium. So the pressure would be the pressure exerted by these vapor molecules as they slam into and crash into the walls of their container. So if we look back at our equation with mass times acceleration, this means that pressure goes up if either the mass of molecules, which would come in either a greater number of molecules or the molecules being heavier, were to go up, or if the molecule's acceleration were to increase, i.e. they're moving faster, or if the area in which the molecules are moving was made to be smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this stuff so I can make another drawing here next to it. So I hope you wrote that down and you can just rewind. And we're also going to go ahead and draw, sorry, we're going to go ahead and draw another container right next to this one. And this is going to be our ISO container. Again, filled halfway with ISO. And some of those little ISO molecules floating around. ISO. So we're going to look at these at 20 degrees Celsius, which is about room temperature. And we know that the vapor pressure of ISO and the vapor pressure of SIVO are 238 and 157 millimeters of mercury. This is at room temperature, like we said. So, of note, vapor pressure is innate to every chemical. Now, the molecular mass, we'll do them for both, is 200 grams per mole and 
184 grams per mole. And we're just going to look back again at our equation. Pressure equals mass times acceleration over area. But in this scenario, our area is the same for both. It's a constant. So now our pressure is equal to our mass times our acceleration. This means that for the vapor pressure of isofluorine to be higher than sevofluorine, either the molecules have to be heavier, which they aren't, they, or they have to be accelerating faster, or they have to have more of them liberated from the liquid to the pre, um, vapor phase. So the very simplistic way that I look at this, at least to understand it, and I'm not a chemist, is that iso at 20 degrees Celsius will liberate 238 molecules of isofluorine where sevofluorine at the same temperature will only liberate 157 molecules. Thus increasing our mass of molecules in the vapor form in iso compared to sevo. What this means in words, at least to me, is that isofluorine more readily enters the vapor form compared to sevofluorine, which means that the sevofluorine vaporizer is designed to have to try and liberate more molecules at the same room temperature because it's harder to turn it from a liquid into a vapor. So if we were to place isofluorine, which as a function of its chemical structure is more readily turned into a vapor, into the SIVO tank, which is designed to try and liberate more molecules from something that is less likely to go from liquid to vapor, it means that we will overdose the patient because putting ISO in a SIVO vaporizer will lead to excessively more ISO molecules being liberated than they would if they were in a normal ISO fluorine container. Conversely, putting SIVO into an ISO vaporizer, you would underdose the patient for the opposite reason that SIVO is harder to liberate from a liquid form to a volatile or a gaseous form and when you put it in a container that's calibrated for a molecule that more readily enters the vapor phase it means that it's going to have a harder time helping liberate those molecules from liquid to vapor. I hope this made sense to you uh, like I said, I'm not a physicist, I'm not a chemist, but this is kind of the way that I conceptualize it. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Otherwise, that's why putting SIVO into an isovaporizer and vice versa and what happens as a result. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to write in. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next video. The next part, we're probably going to take a look at the desfluorine vaporizer and what makes it special.